start. Let's kick us off today. Oh Lance, I'm curious. There was a uh, our readers were talking about how everybody celebrated. What did you do after the game? Um, went home. <laughs> um, well, Kelly and I had well we as we usually do for home games, have a house full. That's kind of in their town usually, to different family and friends. So we had that. Um, we had some friends from New York that stopped by that were in town. Um, and we had some former players from Buffalo that had come to the game that we invited over and had some pizzas and watched some football and talked old times. Pretty, pretty eventful. And then, what do you tell the team on Sunday or that time where you say, I hope you guys enjoyed the win, now let's focus? How does that come yeah, yeah, you know, that was this morning about, you know, four hours plus ago, four and a half hours ago. Um, you know, we, you know, they had a big win, they earned it, but, you know, we're, you know, our, our ability to play well after big wins, you know, we, we, we need to play better, I think, after some of these wins. Um, and how do we want to approach it? How, what do they want to do? They have an opportunity where you have to go on the road, play a first place team. And um, opportunity for a lot of things are, are in front of us down the stretch here. There's a lot of great matchups. First of all, each and every week in this conference, but there's some, there, there are even a lot of people playing each other this week. And, and where are we going to be? Are we just satisfied with bowl eligibility? Um, or do we want to be a, a, a team that continues to take steps? So those are all the things. I mean, meaning, but on on back to the, you know, even when I said to them in the locker room was, you know, how you know, proud I was of them, and they should enjoy it and and embrace it. And but again, win or lose, you got to move on on Mondays and 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 got to make it happen. And you, know, you can walk around and let everybody tell you how great you are, but uh, I know. Coach Campbell and his staff are going to have, you know, they're playing well and he, they're going to have them ready to play. And just some early thoughts as you go through film, what do you see in Iowa State? Yeah, again, you know, Matt's done a great job, always has. But, you know, um, you know, last year didn't go, you know, uh, as probably as well as they liked. You know, they, they, they had a, a, you know, Fall, early or whatever, July, August distraction, and again a sign of a of an excellent head coach is navigating his team through that. And they have their, you know, had a couple losses early, and they've stayed to it. And you can see, I think they have like ten seniors on the roster right now or something. And and you can see these this group of young players. They're well coached. They're fundamentally sound. They execute well. They play within their system. And he's got them playing really well and, and with a lot of confidence right now. Their quarterback continues to get better. Um, he can make plays uh, with his feet and keeping plays alive. You can see that he doesn't let uh, whatever freshman or inexperienced mistakes rattle him. And he keeps, he keeps fighting. They've got some good running backs, well coached in the offensive line. And their defensive scheme has caused issues for us for a long time. And, and uh, we've got to be able to have answers. Curious, going back to 2021 in this game, feels like both programs are in different spots now. When you think back to that game, how much do you feel like you've just evolved as a program yeah. since then? Well, a lot. I mean, that was, I, I, like, I think I've said it here before, just pulling in the Ames. That wasn't the Ames I, I remembered from the mid-90s. And, and what, a, what a transformation uh, that they've made, what Matt's done, Jamie Pollard, the athletic director. Um, again, that all of a sudden it was like, ooh, if this is part of the um, measuring stick of where we've got to move this thing, we got a lot of work to do. I think we're making those strides. Um, that was a heavy experience football team that completely got after us. Uh, excellent college football environment. Um, but uh, I would say this, uh, you know, they're four and one on top of the league right now, so I don't say the programs are too, you know, completely different. I think we're different. But uh, again, I think, uh, you know, Coach Campbell and, and in that staff has quietly put themselves right, right in a very good spot here down the stretch. I'm curious about kind of starting faster on the road. How do you think you guys have done in that regard this year? And 
what do you feel like you guys can do to start better in those games? Well, I'll tell you this. We don't, don't sit there and go, let's see how slow we can start on the road this week, okay? I, I mean, it's, uh, again, you, you talk about it. You look at your travel plans. You look at what you do at the hotel, how you get them going, what we're trying to do. You do that each and every week, Michael. I, I mean, that, that, you know, again, you want to start fast at home and away. It isn't like, uh, you know, it, um, there's certain things that, that happen. You know, and uh, you know, going back to last week's game, we had the conversation: was they're explosive? Do if we win the toss, should we take the ball? Well, then we went and looked at Andy, went and looked at it, and he said, uh, every every team has either gone three and out, or or Oklahoma had gotten a turnover. Well, the first series isn't really if if, if that backfires, then then it's a double whammy. So, you know, all those things. And I said, then the more we analyze it, usually we lose the toss like we did, and and then it doesn't even matter because you don't really get to choose. So, um, but yeah, we we want to start fast everywhere. And you got to, especially if you can on the road and take the crowd out of it. And you know, we're going to play on grass. We haven't done that a lot. We got to get used to those things. If you make it a big deal, or you know, you have to prepare, but don't make it too big of a thing. So. A lot of things to do and getting off to a good start there is going to be important. And we saw Jalen warming up on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Just generally, what's it going to take for him to earn that starting job back? Well, you know, again, that's not, you, you, we're not at that point. Okay, I'll just say that. We're not at that point yet to, to, to decide that. He, he works that every day. Some days are better than others. And, uh, um, you know, when Jalen Daniels is healthy, Jalen is the starting quarterback. Okay, so. Um, Area between that out, and, uh, um, so, um, but you know we're we're not at that uh, at that point today. I hope there's going to be you know this, but uh, then I'll probably talk less about it. Uh, can you just go over your linebacker play over the last three four weeks? It, it seems like it's been pretty good. Um, it's been solid. Yeah. I, I think so. You know, there's times in there that we got to be better, but I, I think he. You have a tendency to kind of go that route with with JB and and, and Cornell. I, I thought uh, Taiwan showed. I thought Taiwan played hard and strained and did some things. Uh, you know, Rich has been there. Craig. Uh, you know, they all. I I think again, we keep talking about our depth. We you know, Jason Gillen got in late in the game when we needed him in, in in some of those passing situations. I thought he did all right. Continue to to stress to that group. I think they gain confidence, understanding. And again, if we can stay healthy and fresh, um, they'll continue to play fast. Is, is there anything to that, that, that? Why over the last few weeks is it just experience reps? Um, why they've kind of shown up? Well, every consistent? well every guy's a little different, man. Sure. You know, yeah. I, okay, JB Brown. Well, you know, it's halfway through the season in this system and understanding what it's going to take and things like that. He's helping. We talked about Taiwan not being healthy the first month of the season. So now he's healthier, so we rotate. Mm -hmm. Guys are fresher, do some things. Cornell was not healthy in camp, but had a solid spring. He shows up at, you know, just, just at different times showing getting better. You know, we talk about the Texas interception, we do some things. So again, when, when guys are getting better, Jason has shown flashes, flashes. We've talked about his effort plays and Okay, well, maybe this guy can play 10 snaps at a time. Maybe this guy's going to split a little bit more than, than the guys that have been playing 50 snaps a game are a little bit fresher in the fourth and we just get better production. Sure. And, and if we can get to that point where you can play six and, and, you're, and you're playing, um, you know, whether it be two-thirds, one-third of the reps and things like that, I think it really helps your football team in so many ways. And then you can play some of those starters a little bit more on special teams. And I think Iowa State does a lot of that, where they're able to rotate a lot of guys. And they kind of, they're, you know, in a lot of ways, they're cloned in a way that they got same body types and they've recruited well with their system and they play well and hard. And, and then you see see it show up on their special teams. You, you praised Kobe Bryant plumbing the last couple of years. But I wonder, mm -hmm. when, you, when you play the number six team in the country and you get a win like that, and, and he doesn't show up on the defensive stat sheet, but his impact's enormous. Can you just talk about yeah, his yeah, impact? Yeah, you studied that studied stat sheet more than me, yeah. probably, because I look at you know how we do holistically in the in this thing of because stats can be misleading. Right. And right. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think Kobe, you know, sometimes he gets a little down and frustrated because he wants to make more impact, you know. But 
uh, I think he's he's uh, respected by offensive coordinators, and, and he has to remain patient. And you know, I was, you know, I don't. Uh, this isn't by any means saying I predicted or you know, you know had a premonition that Melo's going to have a pick six, but I just wondered when one of those opportunities for Melo was going to come. Yeah because they, they've thrown that way a lot more. He's got a really good feel for things, and, and one of these times he was going to let it go. But then we lost him. He played seven snaps the whole game. So, But, yeah, Kobe's done a great job. We, you know, part of, part of uh, understanding and growth is, is the respect that he's given. But, you know, he's going to have his opportunities down the street. Yeah, and when, when you explain that to him, like, hey, he they're not throwing at you, that is a big impact. Does he, does he get that? I mean, um. Oh, I, I think so. It yeah. doesn't mean he likes it. Right. <laughs> but um, I, as I've said many times, I said it to the team Friday night, you know, you know, Kobe's one of the most competitive guys there is, you know, between rock, paper, scissors, and shadow box, or whatever they play and everything else. He'll, he, he's always going to find a way to compete. And, and that's what I love about him. It's what makes him the, the player that he is. And uh, so uh, I think, you know, again, he, he that's part of uh, – Understanding again what this game is, and it's a team game, and you got to find it, but you also got to be ready because just about that time, and you got to stay disciplined because that's when you get a double move on you or something like that when you're trying to make something happen. A real quick, last one for me. Um, Jalen's status the other day, I meant to ask you Saturday, was he in an emergency role? He was, I, he was dressed. Okay, thanks. Coach, is there, um, is there any difference in the tone in? Uh, sharing a game film with the team, coming out of a huge win out of a game that really could have gone either way in a lot of different spots. You want to keep it more positive than you might otherwise? Or are you yeah. approach a game film? You know, that's a, that's a coordinator position coach, you know, decision. I don't say, hey, do this or that. It's, you know, you know like to a fault, I probably turn the page way too fast maybe in some of those in, in those situations. But, again, uh, and you've heard me say this before, those of you who have been here for – you know, two plus years is, you know, one of the things I always say after the game is win or lose, we've got to be able to come in and be, uh, be coachable and accept what's on the film. Yeah, we want to show good plays. But, you know, that's what Sports Center and all the recap shows and the, in, the, in the sports on television, that's what everybody else does, you know. You know, I always say life's not a highlight film. Okay, sometimes we want to pretend it is. So we, in order for us to continue to get better, we've got to be able to correct the, the, the parts that need to be corrected. And, and in the hours we're given by the NCAA, we only have so much time. That's why I try to say to the team is, sometimes I might be dwelling too much on the negative, but I only get 15 minutes in front of them on a Monday, max, probably closer to 10. And I talk to them some days, on Thursdays in this room, and then at most of it's post-practice because I try to give the time to our coaches to teach and coach. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be able to address what needs addressing, and then, you know, I didn't say not not overly negative, but there's enough people outside this building that are telling them everybody how great they are, okay? We've got to make sure we're showing them the positives and where, where it's been approved and where we need to go. Uh, just looking at your journey and Coach Campbell's journey, do you see the similarities there? We went from D three and you know kind of yeah, you know he comes place. from a highly successful Division three program. Um, yeah, I have great respect for Matt and, and his journey and and uh, yeah, I, I'd say that. I mean, I could go on. There's there's a few like that, but yeah, I I think uh, I want to say my first year at Buffalo was his last year at Toledo. Um, we did not play each other that year. Didn't know each other very well, but. Um, through some meetings and things like that that we have in the spring and chance really a chance and again um, we we have, we have a lot of common people that we know and respect and I think yeah the similarities of, of going there and you know uh, the question was asked about our first game there and and Matt was uh, uh, you know I don't know gave a lot of words of encouragement I guess kind of what he went through of, of staying with the way we do it it'll work um, just you know, don't don't let don't don't let anybody tell you differently and, and go about it because, um, you know, I, you know, because that's where you know again he says it, it'll it'll play out for you and and I'll always remember that appreciate that. Yeah, thank you.
And then just with Jalen, nothing has changed regarding his red shirt. Like, I'm sorry? Uh, nothing has changed with Jalen, like potentially red shirting or anything like that? No, that has never been discussed. Okay. Never. You mentioned Jason Bean standing up and talking to the team. I know the social people put that out there, but how would you describe Jason's like leadership style? Well, um, vastly improved. Um, pretty quiet guy. Um, respected though, but you know, I, I think you know, Jason's one of those guys that his confidence as a leader has grown with his confidence in the offense and his personal play. And, uh, you know, and when he got here and going through everything, it was kind of that. But to watch him, um, I think the, you know, I, I can't speak for the locker room on this, but I know uh, the minute he stepped back on campus to be part of this team last January, I, I think his, uh, his respect in the locker room grew even more. And I'm curious with Lawrence Arnold. Mm -hmm. What has impressed you most about this season for him? Um, he continues to come up with big, big catches for us, as we know. Um, I think, though, like a lot of guys want targets and, and catches and that, I think he's understanding uh, the big picture and, and how it plays out for all the guys a lot better. Um, and then the, probably the one that I appreciate the most is uh, he really knows our offense and he knows we ask, we line him up in a lot of different spots and, and when he's asked questions, he knows. And, uh, you know, again, to, to, all, to all of us in the room here, because some days, I don't know, they got more personnel groupings than I know. And, and he knows which one, like he's not just, you know, there's offenses in this country where you're the left outside receiver and you're the right inside receiver, and you line up in these little spots, and that's it, okay? And then there's ours where, you know, but not only are there splits and, and other things he has to learn, he's playing X, he's playing Z, he's playing the R, but, you know, we do a lot of different things and put a lot on those young men to learn and understand, and uh, Lawrence knows as well as anyone. I know there were some guys who got banged up a little bit. How's the overall health? Before? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you, know, again, you know, again, coming out of it, we had a lot of, a fair amount of guys not do much today. Um, a few guys in boots and things like that. Um, we'll have a better idea, as, as always, as we progress through the, the week. And, um, you know, I think, you know, a couple are trending to, to be in a good spot, and a couple are probably going to be trending to probably not being able to go. So I, I'm not ready to quite get to that yet until Trent Carter and the staff tell me. Anything else, Coach? All right, thanks, guys. Have a great week.